Welcome to Arizona Longtails. My name is David. And I'm Joey. And this segment we're going to be calling Arizona Longtail Longtail Tips. A Z L T L T T. We're planning on bulletproofing these things you should do before you head out to the water just to make your day out more enjoyable. All right, so uh, we identified a problem not very too long ago. David had already bulletproofed his prior to this. But when I use this old, uh, I guess, tie kit that I that I picked up um, from Craigslist, I had these tightened down as as much as possible. But on this kind of Z bar, there's a lot of torque that you can that you can put on those little mounts. I was going down the water, and it did this, and then bent the cable full throttle, it spun all the way around this way. And the tail was almost in the boat, and I almost couldn't do anything about it, and I was fighting to get to the to the kill switch, which was strapped to me. I don't want to go through that again. Safety first. Die. All right, David. So, uh, David invented this little mod here. Um, on his, he can remove the handle and flip it the other direction when he's transporting, but this this generic tie kit that we got uh, out of Craigslist uh, doesn't really have that option. Uh, we wanted to get a mud skipper kit, but they've been sold out for a good while. They're really hot sellers because they're they're really good kits. For testing purposes, we wanted to be able to use the eight to 16 horsepower range uh, and see if it was optimal for the kind of boats that we're using. Now go. <laughs> the name on this part is called a wire lock pin. Uh, I got it at Home Depot. They're about three bucks. This is a quarter inch diameter and it's two inches long uh, so I'll be right there if you want to take a look uh, so Joe already aligned it to where he wanted we could have kicked it out if you wanted any specific but tying down as it would have been if you're ready for the boat but this is where we're gonna drill a hole through and through uh, we're gonna do a pilot hole then we're gonna do a quarter inch and then I'm actually gonna take the bar out and drill that one up a step up higher just to get rid of any uh, tightness because if it is too tight with the same leverage will kink it the, the lock and you won't be able to pull it out so with the bar being just a little bit bigger diameter we'll, uh, we'll keep this being able to pull out and, and, and move around that's through through I'm gonna go all the way through but gonna step it up to the quarter inch get this guy going what size is that David this one's a quarter inch okay so this is gonna be the so it's gonna go through and through now that the quarter inch I'm gonna use this one as the actual guide to go fully through the rest of the material see so like to add some lubrication Three hours later. All right, so we already did a quarter inch hole through and through the bar and the mount. So this lock pin will go in and lock in on the other side. So this won't go anywhere. Loosen, loosen the, the nuts on the on thing real quick. Let's prove it. So say your big industrial motor that you got on here decides that it's gonna vibrate everything loose. Because you were lazy, you didn't want to get your crescent run out. Didn't double check. Didn't double check. Alright, so... Alright, let's see if this is a redemption from what happened to me last time. So, this is like a worst case scenario. I still have complete control. It's not going anywhere with that pin in there. That's what would have happened to you if you didn't have that little safety mod. It goes in, slides out smoothly, but the handle itself has a little bit of play. 
inside the hole. So because this is pretty snug, that play is gonna start bending this rod to where you won't be able to uh, freely pull it out. So to, to alleviate that, we are handlebars hold one size up. This I believe is the next size up is a 1760 fourths, but you could go, you know, uh, another uh, eighth or sixteenth uh, bigger depending what rod you have. So on this one, I'm gonna tighten it down so it doesn't move on me. And I'm just gonna drill it out. Ah! Things they, they like to move. The straight bar, you might not notice it shift, but these, these handles have a lot of leverage, especially at the end. Don't wanna lose. And that happened to me out in the middle of the water. Really, really windy day, and I almost died. All right, so overboard the hole a little bit. And just the, the handlebar, you don't want to do the, the mounting hole. You want that one to be snug. Keep that play low. So now, of the bar, the up and down leverage play that it has, is that it's resting on the tube receiver rather than the pin being the factor. So that's that is with the leverage going up here, the pin still spins freely. If you're putting leverage and the pin gets tight, then you're putting leverage on the pin and it is gonna bend out of shape and you won't be able to pull it out. Um, and which pulling it out is gonna, is beneficial on the seven horsepower kits. Uh, because I like to remove it. I'm gonna store the boat and put the handle in reverse. That way it saves me about three feet because now it's uh, gonna be with the but, shaft. Yeah, you know. generic kit that we bought, um, it's not uh, gonna work that way. Yeah, I got some hardware in the way because it does save you the three feet that the handle could stick out. So uh, the storage, it's, uh, you know, it's nice in the backyard or in the garage, doesn't get in the way. You know, I, I'd still, if you're on the water, I'd still use these. They're nice safety measures to keep everything tight rather than just the pin itself. You could double up on pins. You could do two pins if you like. Uh, but that one pin just saves from, if these loosen up, losing that, that leverage position with the handle.